that's uh, interesting because what what I um, what I like from uh, one thing that I like from from faith is that in a way it's um, it, it's paradoxical, but it transform the therapy in a more um, dialogical um, mm. um, uh, thing, you know, because um, I remember uh, an article of the Shazer and Kimberg, in Kimberg, uh, um, 1992, I think. It's uh, therapy apostrophe reviews, something like that, and they start uh, saying something like, uh, uh, "It's very strange because therapy it's about talking, but very few kind of therapies um, think about how we talk during therapy." The thing yeah. I say, and uh, it seems that in a way, ter- fits um, help us to transform. Um, or to put our attention in the dialogical circle that we have to create with the, the mm. client. I'm not the expert. Mm. I, I don't uh, put my hand on you and make the therapy, but we, con- we um, construct this together. Um, mm. Two last question. Uh, mm. One is about brief therapy. Uh, I, I remember um, a chapter in, in a book of Jeff Zeig, a chapter by Jay Halley. And Jay Halley said something like, um, you need to be trained to uh, make therapy longer, something like that. Uh, it means that if you um, learn a method that um, brings you and your client to have a very long therapy, you will have a very long therapy. Uh, normally, therapy are, are briefer than psychoanalysis or other kind of therapies. Um, but with fit and with what we know about the liberal practice, uh, does it still make sense to talk about brief therapy? So, Jay Haley and the work of strategic therapists, and I think even to a certain degree, the work we did at Brief Family Therapy Center and Solution Focused Therapy, all have to be viewed in context. And uh, because context often drives the conversation. And at that particular time, the dominant idea was doing therapy long term was the best practice. That's where the real change happened. And we had lots of ideas about that supported that. For example, short term therapies encourage a flight into health. Um, and but here's the big recognition I had once I started to look at the data, and especially with regard to this debate between brief or, or long term. If you look at the data, going all the way back to the early 1940s, and ask what was the average number of visits people saw a mental health professional in the 1940s, the average number of visits was 4.3. So you have the theory, we should do long-term therapy, and you have this this, uh, contrarian partner, whoa, we should do treatment as brief as possible, all fighting what is largely, in my opinion, an ideological battle disconnected from reality. All therapy from the beginning in modern mental health has been relatively short. 4.3 4.3 sessions. Right now, in non-commercial populations, the average number of sessions is about five or six. 90% of cases in America are finished in 20 sessions or less. So where, where is long-term therapy? It's in the minds of theoreticians and practitioners. Once you embrace the reality that all treatment is relatively short, you you can work within those parameters. The modal number of times, that is the most frequent number of times people see a therapist is one. It's always been one. So when we were saying back in the late 1980s, we have more single session cures, we were boasting about something or taking credit for something that had always been the case. But we didn't know that. Our, our lack of knowledge on, in retrospect is, is, is embarrassing, really. 
when people ask me today about long and short therapies or long and brief therapies, I often say, can you imagine a surgeon asking that? Let's say you need heart surgery. And the surgeon came in and said, well, would you like the long surgery or the brief surgery? I think most people would be absolutely confused by that. I think it's a silly distinction that exists in theory only. Because what the customer is concerned about is effect. If a surgeon said that to me, I would say, I want the most effective surgery. And in order to do that, I have to find out how much do you need? And the parameters are relatively brief. But in many cases, more is better than less for that person. And in all cases, when treatment isn't working, briefer is better. With you, briefer is better. This client may need something else or somebody else to help them. So I don't think the distinction between brief and long-term is um, borne out by the research, and I don't think it's useful. I think it's a distinction without difference. Potatoes or spuds? It's all potatoes. It's all starch. It has the exact same effect on the body. I don't, I don't really understand the distinction any longer. And by monitoring, we can find out how much does that person need and when they've had enough of me and maybe need something else. I'm just a little concerned because I have to publish this interview on my channel on YouTube, mm. that is Flavio Canistra Brief Therapy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I think brief therapy as, as an idea and the strategies that are associated with it, I think are, are, are fine. I think that main commitment needs to be to the outcome. And this is actually what I took away from my time in kindergarten as a researcher with solution-focused brief therapy, that what was really important was did the client get what they came for? And so if as brief or strategic or whatever therapist you are, you can shift your mindset to the results, are you getting what you came for? Well, then, then I think we'll be okay. And we don't need to fight over them. Whenever you talk like this, it's a little bit like saying, the Pope is not infallible. And people get all upset and feel attacked. Um, but if you've traveled the world, you know that there are many spiritual traditions that can help people. And it doesn't have anything to do with the goodness, rightness or wrongness of what the Pope might say. <laughs>